are you, Tetch? Good, how are you? Tetch, uh, Jechter, I, 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 excuse me, excuse me if I mispronounce your last it's name. pretty close, Tetch Jechter. Jechter, uh, yeah. Chief Engineer for Corvette, so um, we're here in the Mountain Springs uh, Race uh, Resort, uh, Motor Resort, and uh, the new Corvette C06, so the new baby. So let's go for a little ride and talk about the car. All right, um, put our seatbelts on. Absolutely, safety first as always. So can we please, uh, uh, oh, the brake is on, no it's not, so there you go. So we're in the manual uh, uh, version, the manual transmission version of it, but obviously you have the automatic. So yes. uh, can we go back first to the to the new generation of the Corvette, like which debuted almost two years ago, right? The Stingray, yes. Yeah, the Stingray. Uh, yeah, we started that uh, not quite two years ago. It was fall of 2013. Yeah. It debuted as a 2014 model. We have to go a little bit to yeah. the right here. Okay, exactly. <laughs> so. Um, Let's talk about because that's the base for this car, right? That's the basis for the car, but we always had this car in mind. Uh, a lot of the design parameters uh, around the foundation of the car, the fundamental structure, were based on the performance expectations uh, for this car. So the heavier spring rates, bars, uh, more capable tires, brakes, all of that puts additional loads into the car. And so we had to engineer the, the basic car uh, to accept those higher loads. Okay. So the Stingray, uh, what, what engine that's like, what's the base engine for the, for the Stingray? The Stingray has a 6.2 liter small block a V8 produces 460 horsepower and uh, is uh, extremely efficient. You know, we get uh, 17 miles per gallon in the city and 29 highway. Almost got uh, 32 or 30 miles per gallon highway uh, when we introduced the eight speed automatic. Yeah, uh, we just missed it by a teeny bit, um, so we may <laughs> retest. Uh, yeah. next year and, and try to get to 30 miles per gallon. It should be very good for a car with that kind of performance. Exactly. So uh, now we're talking about the, the big car. I mean, not the big car in, because of the same proportions, but the big car in weight in, in performance. I mean, yes. this is like, like well, a racetrack for the street, right? 400, it's a, a 200 more horsepower. That's so amazing. It's a, it's a lot more horsepower, almost 50% uh, more horsepower. And when you add horsepower, you can't just do that. You have to upgrade all other systems in the car. So the suspension, the brakes, the tires. Um, really, if you look at all around the car, you see uh, a lot of um, areas where the engineering had to account for the fact that the car was more capable. You see that in the aerodynamics. Uh, that's one of the reasons we spent most, so much time co-developing this with the race team. Yeah. Uh, because when you're talking about that outer limit of uh, performance capability, you really want to use the race lessons learned. That's what they do uh, day in, day out, uh, each week, each race. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we get uh, all the tools that they use, all the understandings that they have, and try to maximize how much technology we can transfer uh, from the race program into the streetcar. Yeah. And it really reflects in the driving experience. I don't know if you've been on the track. No, I, I, was, I was on the track briefly, a couple of laps at the introduction uh, lap, laps, uh, but I was on the road already. And this is a car that you can really enjoy driving for a long, a long uh, time. I mean, and it's comfortable. It's like a lot of luxury. I mean, beginning with the Stingray, that like the interior design was one of the big, big, big improvements. Not the only one, but uh, I mean, this is a very comfortable car for uh, every day. Right, and we try to we try to do that. And we're proud on Corvette of doing cars that have a lot of bandwidth. They're good at a yeah. lot of different things. Uh, you could buy a Z06 and just use it as your daily driver. You could commute uh, to work. If you want to do a uh, long distance touring uh, around the US, you want to drive uh, 700 miles a day, 800 miles a day, it's very comfortable. Uh, very uh, good luggage capability, even yeah. for a car with such high capability. Or if you want to take the car and just park it at the track and do nothing but go to the track <laughs> every and weekend. Uh, drive as fast as you can on the track every day, I'm sure there'll be plenty of customers who do that as well. Yeah, this is uh, the Stingray is becoming like, I mean, it's always been very popular the, with all the Corvettes, but this new generation with the change of the design and all the new technology, I mean, you, this is the best you ever built, right? Well, we always try to do, we, yeah. you know, we stand on the shoulders of everyone who went yeah. before us. Uh, over 60 years of history, the Corvette is the longest running car nameplate in the auto industry. Doesn't matter, Europe, America, anywhere, uh, Corvette is the longest running car nameplate in uh, history, continuously. And uh, so the car has been under continuous development and we've never deviated 
from the original Miston. Yeah. So we've always, uh, you know, very early on, it was a small block V8, two passengers only, don't try to do always, two plus yeah, exactly. two, don't try to do other variants of the car. We focused on the specific mission on the car and, and that mission has become even more and more focused over time where it's all about the driving pleasure. How, how much driving pleasure can you have? And so uh, we have coupes and convertibles and we've optimized uh, everything about the car to be a perfect solution for all those driving pleasures. Yeah, at both extremes. I mean, as you were saying, like just cruising around, like going almost like a day-to-day -day, uh, car and then like coming to the racetrack and do like extreme string things with the car. Right, race car speeds. Yeah. So you can enjoy uh, every aspect of the car and still have the car covered by 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. We're not gonna invalidate your warranty if you go to the track. Uh, it's relatively easy to service. Uh, the, the maintenance costs are relatively low when you consider cars of this kind of performance level can be absolutely exorbitant uh, in terms of maintenance. Uh, this car you can service at your local Chevrolet uh, dealership. Yeah. So. Do they have to be certified for these kind of car? Or any, there are some any? specialty operations that we try to make sure that the dealers who uh, sell and service Corvettes are up to date on the, the latest information. And most people are very conscious uh, about having a highly skilled person uh, work on the yeah. vehicle. But still, even though you get that, you're not paying any more uh, for that skill level, the, the hourly rate for the mechanics that deal, it's the same uh, whether it's a Corvette or a Malibu or a Camaro. Yeah, so uh, the C06, I mean the standard car, it's it's already like way, very high performance, but you still have an, an extra package that can make it even more, right? The standard Z06? Yeah, but do you have an extra? Well, then we have the uh, Z07 yeah. package, which is equivalent, even though all Z06s are track capable, um, we have uh, an equivalent to the Z51 package on the Stingray, so the very most uh, engineered car for track specific, that's the Z07 package. That becomes comes with the specialized Michelin tires developed just for this car, the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s. Yep. Um, we package that with unique chassis uh, calibrations uh, throughout the car. Uh, and then you get the ceramic brakes uh, from Brembo uh, to get you the stopping capability. And you get the customizable aerodynamics package. So you get more aggressive aero standard. And then in the back of the car comes the uh, more aggressive end plates on the front splitter and the adjustable uh, clear bridge uh, wicker on the rear spoiler that lets you fine tune the car for how you want it to handle on the at truck, speed. Yeah. Yep. And so uh, it's it all that comes together in a, a single package uh, for people who really really want to go fast on the track. And um, let's go. Let's talk a little bit about uh, pricing because this car is like steel. I mean, for everything that offers, I mean, it's relatively not very expensive. Huh? Well, we you know want to make sure that uh, the car is affordable, even though it has the latest and greatest technology throughout it you know in terms of the use of materials and the technology we use to develop it uh, we go to the best suppliers uh, everywhere to get the, the best hardware including the magneto rheological shocks the, the brakes from Brembo I mentioned the tires from Michelin uh, so it's a big challenge actually to put all that content uh, in the car and still have it affordable uh, we have advantages because we sell in pretty good volumes for yeah. a sports car. Uh, we have both the Stingray and the Z06, so we can leverage the volume of the Stingray. We can also leverage the fact that we're part of General Motors uh, to buy certain components that are uh, not specific to the Corvette uh, at very low cost. We can use General Motors manufacturing processes uh, like in the powertrain build or our new 8-speed transmission build to get us components that are uh, extremely high performance but at a very reasonable price. So what are we talking about the price for, for this car? Uh, the, the Z06 starts just under 80,000, 78,995 uh, is the, the base price. And then that's for a coupe. Uh, you can also get a convertible. I think that's about $5,000 more, just like the Stingray convertible is about 5,000 more than the Stingray coupe. And then when you get the the, the CL7 package, that's uh, another eight thousand dollars, I believe. Yeah, it's between yeah, it's like eight or ten thousand uh, dollars. And if you look around the world at the cost of just the brakes, just exactly, ceramic exactly. brakes, exactly, they're like ten thousand dollars in other manufacturers. Just the brakes, and and sometimes more than that. Yeah. Uh, so they're they're quite expensive, high end, uh, exotic. Uh, kind of race componentry. Actually, they're more exotic than a lot of race componentry, even in our own race car. The race yeah. series makes us take the ceramics off and go back to uh, iron brakes to try to keep the cost of racing down. 
Uh, so in some ways you're getting superior technology uh, to the race car. So far, yeah, we put all that stuff together in a package that's uh, very affordable. So you can you can buy the seventy-eight thousand dollar car, pay the extra eight thousand dollars, whatever it is. So less than uh, less than a hundred, way less than a hundred thousand right, dollars. And there's nothing that compares to this when you compare pricing and horsepower technology and all that, right? I mean, there's really you have to spend like two or three more times more that that price. Not me quoted, but journalists have told me <laughs> ten times the price. You have to go to a Porsche 918, yeah. something like that, uh, to get superior performance. That's amazing. It's really, really incredible. I mean, that that talks a lot about like the great job that General Motors does in every every segment of, of the cars. But this being the, the very top, I mean, really speaks a lot of what you guys have been doing for a long time. Huh? Well, we are the technology flagship for performance in General Motors. Cadillac would be a technology flagship for other kinds of technology. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of pure performance and capability, uh, we do a lot of the kind of upfront development work and a lot of the things we do, you, you see trickled down to uh, other performance variants, whether it's a Camaro or a V-Series Cadillac. So yeah, we take, and, and actually it ends up going down uh, farther than that. Things like stability systems, yeah. where Corvette uh, was a very early adopter on stability and magnetorheological dampers. That's now come down to many other models in General Motors. Yeah. So uh, we've been driving really easy here around the, the racetrack facilities, not on the truck. And uh, so the manual transmission, there's also the automatic, right? Correct. What, can you talk about uh, what's the, the specs of the automatic? It's uh, how many speeds in that? It's a uh, eight-speed uh, automatic transmission. Uh, historically, if you look at the previous generation Z06 and ZR1, it was manual transmission only. only yeah. And the reason was there was no automatic, whether it was a dual clutch transmission or a regular planetary automatic, there was no transmission in the world that would fit in our package that could take the speed of our LS7 engine or the torque of our the LS9 yeah, engine. The power, so yeah. There just was no transmission available to us. Even though we had customers uh, requesting that option, there was no hardware. So when we started uh, developing this car, the seventh generation Corvette, we worked with General Motors powertrain and the transmission folks specifically to develop an all new eight speed transmission specifically engineered for this car. Even though it's been in production for the Stingray yeah. for a little while now, the the defining specifications for the transmission were based on this car because it's the highest horsepower, highest torque uh, application for that transmission. We also benchmark uh, dual clutch transmissions around the world and we wanted to make sure that the, as a performance transmission, the, the transmission stood tall against uh, the, the seven and eight speed DCTs out there. So we really got a transmission for the first time in Corvette's history that was a bespoke uh, transmission for the car. So even though you said like always being the transmission, the, automatic, the manual on the CO6 and a lot of people love that, there's really nothing, no, not a person that can drive better or more efficient <laughs> or precise than that transmission, right? The, the automatic transmission. Well, I hope you experience out on the track. Go out and drive, just put it in drive, don't even worry about the paddles, let the transmission think yeah. for itself and focus on gas, brakes, and steering, and you go as fast as you can go, and you watch the job that the transmission does, the gear selections it makes, the speed that it shifts, uh, it's better than uh, any even professional driver. Yeah, and makes me, makes the driver not as good as I am in the truck, a little bit better, because you have to pay attention to all those other right. things, right? Reducing the driver workload, let you yeah. focus on the things you must control, and then also the other chassis controls that we have, including the electronic limited slip differential, the way we tune our chassis and the magnetorheological shocks, all the stuff is set up to not slow you down, but make you a more capable driver. Uh, and you can use the performance traction management to kind of scale up the car to your level of yeah. uh, driving skills or turn it all off uh, if you want uh, to have as much fun as you want, but still make you extremely fast, extremely safe and uh, have a great time with the car. Well, thank you very much, Ted. Uh, I really enjoyed talking to you and, and uh, learning about the, the Corvette co 6 and uh, now we're going to go to the track and see how I can do it. The car is going to do fine. <laughs> the question is about me. <laughs> I think you'll have a great time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great.